Welcome to the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark, where we constantly remind you that love is greater than fear and happiness is resistance. Well, I believe that we are recording. Okay, well, that's uh, well, welcome world to uh, uh, this uh, lovely corner of the internet. Yes, and thank you for joining us. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show, and as you can tell, I'm still super new to Spreaker. <laughs> so, yes, we're recording. We'll be able to edit that out in the podcast, though. That's the good part. But for anybody listening live, that's it. So, welcome to the Age of Fission Radio Show. Today is... Uh, my goodness, September 8th, 2018, and it is 5.45 p.m. in the evening. What is, time is it where you're at, Sean? You're with Sean McGee, and he is with NuclearNews.net. Um, basically, it's 1.45 uh, here on the west coast of Ireland, which is drizzling and dark at the moment. You mean but, 1.45 uh, in the morning. It is indeed. I've just finished doing some uh, video editing. I think we're going to be talking about um, and uploading and what yes, have you. We're going to that be tra- is exactly editing. what made me send you a text today and say, hey, how about let's do a live radio show or something? Because I saw for the first time a video that you had put together uh, with her name was uh, Rachel, uh, Rachel Clark. Yeah. What's her name? Yeah. Clark. Say it again. Uh, Rachel, where it's spelled A R A C H E L, and then Clark, C L A R K. I call that Rachel Clark. And how does she say it, Rachel? Okay. I'm not sure actually. In Europe, it would be Rachel, oh, okay. uh, but I, it's probably Rachel, I suppose. Okay, I well, that's uh, what I called her was Rachel Clark, <laughs> and I remembered it because my name's Lonnie Clark, so that was like an easy remember, right? But it she was, was uh, translating for these families about the health effects of yeah. what they were doing. Um, well, absolutely. I mean, I mean, bottom line is just a, a quick summary of that situation. We've been working, myself and Rachel, uh, Rachel have been working for some time, um, you know, a few months now uh, on getting some interviews together and, what we did, I was uh, working with uh, Libby Hilavi from Nuclear Hot Seat right. and various others. We were just sort of uh, throwing around the, the ideas, what questions should we ask? Right. And we came up with a set of uh, questions, uh, one of which uh, we've, uh, one of the questions which is being answered on the first two videos, uh, which is, uh, you know, have there been health effects uh, from the uh, mm-hmm. radiation that you noticed uh, after the accident? Um, and we've uh, we've heard about there's been uh, you know to summarize the the videos that you you haven't seen yet that I've yet to edit and upload um, and they'll be done over the next couple of weeks uh, they're they're basically saying that they did they most people had nosebleeds and skin rashes not most people but a lot of people did right uh, and and you know I mean, but the way they were describing their children's nosebleeds was so compelling. It wasn't like oh, I mean, mothers have sure. children who have nosebleeds, right? But yeah. nothing. I, I, the thing is, Japanese gov- the Japanese government played it down, didn't they? They they turned around. There was uh, there was a sto- there was a manga on nosebleeds, um, which was closed down. I think in about t- two thirty t- twenty thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, so two years after the accident, they, they started doing mangas about Fukushima. And one of the mangas actually had one of the mayors of Fukushima uh, in the in the manga uh, with his blessing. So they were, he said, yeah, no, you can do that. And he was talking about nosebleeds in the manga and the storyline. And, uh, and and they closed that down. They shut that, uh, that, that manga down. You know, it was, it was banned, basically. And... Um, so we, we, we knew at the early stage, if you go to my Arclight 2011 uh, sort of channel on YouTube, you'll see that uh, when you first come onto the, the, the sort of channel itself, the, there's a, a, a video which auto runs. Uh, and that is a discussion with uh, Miss no- uh, Noro, who is a nurse in Chernobyl. And she basically was there... Um, uh, and uh, working with uh, people from, uh, you know, working in the contaminated areas with children and uh, various other people. 
and um, she did a, a study, basically. And uh, the study shows that people had uh, diarrhea, skin disorders, nosebleeds, uh, irritation, various various uh, things. And it's described in that video. And it was translated by a lady called Tokyo Brown Tabby, who later on was harassed so badly uh, and so, so worried, you know, because you know, the, uh, the the police were actually following these activists around, uh, that she stopped doing the translation work uh, that she uh, was doing. Uh, but, but in that video, you can see it's a Japanese TV, a program called Contact. It was based in Fukushima. They did this this the study. Uh, they, they did the study outside of Fukushima as well in surrounding areas who also had some of these symptoms. Um, so yeah, there were health effects. Now, Sean, did let people me see drop? if I can play this. Hold on, let me see if this works. Sure. I, let me see if I can try this. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Clark. Um, today I'm visiting Tokyo, and uh, we have a, a really nice. Meeting. Are you going to do part one? Are you? Yeah. And I have. Uh, we have uh, Mr. And Mrs. So, uh, but these are the result actually. Just to summarize, then these are the results right. of uh, uh, the. Uh, stop and hold uh, on. The did. Uh, Go she, ahead. she got some yeah she got two groups of people together uh, at over a period of time asked them these questions got some feedback and there's some quite surprising and astounding stuff to come which I'm gonna gonna leave as a cliffhanger for you uh, but but this first uh, one is a, a, a nuclear contamination worker who is also a mother and who who uh, moved out of Fukushima, and she describes the health effects that she had. Mm -hmm. She describes the issues and her reason for leaving. And uh, it's uh, it's quite a, a nice uh, uh, look into a personal uh, sort of. Uh, uh, sort of a personal story, if you like, uh, from this Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. It describes it quite well. Um, there is a part two. Uh, we, we could probably play that uh, okay. as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so well, let me go uh, and get that, that part two because I wasn't sure that this was works. <laughs> this is all kind of new here, Sean. Sean and I uh, knew each other. I met Sean through uh, UCY.TV, another online venue that was closed. And probably a lot of people that find us through Spreaker actually know about UCY TV. That'd be my guess. So, okay, so this is this one. I see Fukushima, I, I see it, and then that was the second one. Nuclear, well, before you, nuclear before you testimony. Would, yeah, before you play it, though, I would say to people that have just tuned in and they're going, oh, mm, what's all this about? I mean, the bottom line is, is that the UN last year made statements supporting these uh, internally displaced people, which is what they are. Now, the Japanese government doesn't recognize them as such, but they are recognized such by uh, certain members of the UN. Uh, and it was uh, basically uh, discussed by a few countries who brought it up during the U UN uh, uh, plenary session uh, of last year. So the bottom line is, is that what you're listening to are people that are recognized by UN experts as having a, a, a reasonable case, you know, describing their situation. Now, these people are actually taking the Japanese government to court. But, uh, you know, we won't bog everybody down yet. But but they are supported by the UN experts who, who visited Japan and looked into this situation on the ground with their expertise. So now you're listening to a voice of one of those many many evacuees those internally displaced people how many would you say when you say many are we talking 50 60 well i, th I uh, think at the moment is a, uh, I, i'm going to pull this figure out of my head but it's eighty thousand was was a figure that, oh my that I, i'm aware. so a very large but percentage of the population that, that, that doesn't include that doesn't include people that moved because they uh, they were getting these symptoms and they didn't want their children be, being in that environment, so they moved to you know some other part of Japan. But they did so voluntary, and the Japanese government will rec not recognise their claim uh, as internally displaced. Now, some of them who lived really near the nuclear plant 
they they can get money but people just outside that imaginary line that's 23 miles away or whatever it is uh, basically that imaginary line then basically oh no you're fine there and that's absolutely ridiculous. the radiation well, isn't that like, called no. the safe side of the yeah, fence no. there was a video done in st louis with that very same concept it's called the safe sure. side of the fence like <laughs> these people were at a picnic I, and that the other I, side I, of the fence people were in protective gear and they were it was a chain link fence and they're sitting there having a picnic with their children in st louis yeah, yeah. Same thing. We can tell stories of that, but you know, at the end of the day, the uh, the, the UN basically have said that this is a serious issue. And oh. just to highlight, why are these things happening? Because the dose isn't enough. If you're going to say that that argument uh, that the nuclear industry argue, then you could go to simplyinfo.org and have a look at their latest article. It's quite lengthy. It, but it's got lots of links to support its claims and peer-reviewed links. Uh, and we're talking, uh, they're, they're discussing the issue of microparticles or uh, nanoparticles or, uh, you know, that sort of thing that are getting into the body, right, and causing problems in the body, right, the internal uh, sort of uh, contamination that, that we discuss but is not discussed very much. I'll have ICL. a link. I'll put a link in the uh, in the in the credits here at the end of the show. And so, Sean, I was able to download that other one. That's nine minutes and fourteen seconds. You want me to play a little bit of that one? Far away. Let's see what happens. I would like to interview Mr. Mrs. Furukawa. Right? Yeah, the same. On that question, the same question about uh, any uh, physical. Uh, Changes. So we stayed uh, in Koreama until uh, October of 2012. So we have one daughter. Uh, and uh, we know that our daughter was not weak. However, can you hear her? What? No, I can't. You cannot. Okay, so I so can hear. So what happened to my daughter, our daughter was the fact that uh, after, right after uh, the accident, I can hear that. she started to cough. Stop. It may be a case that I'm mute. I thought I might be muted or something. But... Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe we should stop it because I, it's a really great audio. I'll include the links to these two audios, and maybe I'm glad you spoke up because it could be that our audience also couldn't hear him because, as I said, this is all new to me, so we'll just see if that if it worked. <laughs> the learning curve. It is the learning curve, and this was this is what kept me yeah. off of the radio show for the last three months was because I was trying to figure this out on my own, and I'm not. I mean, it's hard to figure it out when you kind of don't know what's what. I couldn't really make it work. And then I just decided I'm going to start doing it. I'm just going to yeah, do Well, it. I mean, it's a good time. It's a really good time, for, especially for Americans, to oh. start uh, sort of doing podcasts because uh, they're doing apparently oh, the report. Oh, you know what? This whole thing about this so-called anonymous letter, I'm going to do a YouTube video. I am spitting nails over that. That thing, I think, is the well, biggest, fakest, Trumpest thing in the world. I, I was going to I was going to discuss about the fact that that uh, the inter internet service providers have been uh, basically filtering YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if if you've got big files, you know, you're going to get buffering. And I, I've I've even noticed it a little bit, you know, but I think that's for other reasons, you know, on so certain channels. So make your videos shorter in other words. Well, uh, well the thing is if you're like if you're doing a podcast as you are at the moment, you're using low bad bandwidth and uh, and so people can download it quickly. Uh, either you know they can either download it, which is the best way of doing it, and then listen, or they can listen live without it buffering. Uh, but if you put a video up that's got a much much more bigger uh, uh, sort of uh, size, then uh, you know it's going to buffer 
and uh, or, or not load at all. <laughs> you know, depends on how bad the ISPs in America get. But a report came out, I think it was yesterday uh, or the day before, uh, which uh, basically said that the ISPs were definitely uh, in America, you know, because of this net neutrality thing. They were able to, uh, they, they did it to Netscape, uh, YouTube, uh, and a few others as well. Uh, they just uh, uh, filtered, yeah, what, what do they call it? Um, uh, there's a term, there's a term when they uh, slow the bandwidth down anyway. That's what they did. Oh, and they slowed our still- bandwidth down, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's since the net neutrality thing, apparently, they've been doing it, str- they did it straight away. The, uh, the first day after net neutrality, when they were saying, no, we won't do that, <laughs> they, they actually filtered, uh, started um, uh, slowing people's bandwidths down. And we're, we're talking about Netscape and things. So, you know, people have been trying to watch a film and it's not quite working out for them. Well, so the whole well, thing here is it's an odd feeling. I mean, this thing about the nuclear stuff I had mentioned to you. I mean, I did. I, I want to get back to these children in Fukushima and these families. I'm sorry, yeah. but I, I hope that when I go back and review this, we can hear the audio. At least our audience can be. And if not, please go to um, Sean's uh, website and that spell it for us, Sean, because it's an interesting way that you spell your name. It's Arclight, A R C H L I G H T. That's A R C L I G H T two O one one. So go. that's that's uh, and that that's the that's the tag I use on YouTube. And the so, title you know, of these videos, let me go take a look at it, and I'll tell you because I sure. pulled them down myself just from the cool. internet. Fukushima hashtag Fukushima Truth hashtag Nuclear Testimony hashtag O H C R hashtag UNHRC and there's part yeah. one and part two one done four days ago and 10 hours ago and I will tell you what they are super compelling it made me like wow because what these families are talking about they had perfectly normal children and the yeah. one mother was talking about the volume of blood that is coming out of their children they just couldn't believe it and there was yeah, a no, huge difference funny. between the children that evacuated quickly and those that were forced there to live for a year or so absolutely no it's very concerning the whole thing you know but we knew it was going on at the time i mean those of us that had uh, a new well the thing is it's still going on it's still an ongoing it's almost like what do you think with these earthquakes like the earthquakes the the typhoons everything is spewing all that radioactivity what happened during the earthquake with all those tons of bags did you think have is there been any research or word on that i wonder that's one of the things i wanted to ask you because i know that you keep very abreast of it sure well, I mean, a lot of those bags are buried under sort of mounds of dirt at the moment. Right. Um, so I, I suppose they, they, they would have been protected, but they're also getting very old. They're, you know, right. the bags are only designed to last so long. Right. Um, so it's kind of hard to say, uh, say what's happened to them. What we do know is that uh, in the early days, uh, within about a year or so, of the after the Fukushima disaster, um, I was working with some activists, and we we managed to uh, uh, get do you know do a Twitter survey. Uh, we published it on Nuclear News and various other places, but it was a Twitter survey on nosebleeds, um, and it was done over a period of time. And interesting enough, you mentioned uh, the uh, typhoons and what have you. Um, and we were talking about particulates as well, small little bits that fly around in the dry air. Um, now, what happens is, is that, that they discovered that uh, as the nuclear work was being done in Fukushima and the cleanup that that lady in the first video describes was being done, uh, it was knocking little particles up into the air and they were being breathed in by people and so on and so on. Uh, now, they were getting nosebleeds because obviously these little particles were lodging in the nose and you know just making a little bit of damage to make it bleed um and uh so so while that's going on of course you know they they, then then they were doing these twitter you know and what they said was like hashtag nosebleed in japanese Mm. 
so they they did that and so they they did it worked out it was quite over quite a large area in 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 surrounding prefectures nearly all the way down to tokyo and you know nudging up past right into miyagi uh north of uh, fukushima so south of fukushima north um and uh so it was it was quite quite amazing uh they they turned around they were they were basically um uh, 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 sorry, I'm losing track of where I was there. Um, no, uh, sorry, do you want to that. remind me where I was? Because I was just jumping around on thoughts there. Uh, well, you were talking to. Uh, actually, I kind of got lost myself because I was waiting. I was anticipating what you were saying and, and jumping ahead. Well, you were talking. But, no, about- we, were, we were talking about the nose nosebleeds. Sorry, yeah, the. Right. the t- uh, well, I was so, thinking about the sheer number of children. Well, That's what I, well, I, I, just, I my just brain sort of that. went off to that. Like how many people there were. We did not hear about it, and I was wondering. This was going. This is what how it actually where I was. I wonder when you speak to any of these people, do they feel like they've been abandoned by the world? Because we have not heard of it. It's not that people have yeah. abandoned them. We just have not heard of it. Yeah, well, but just to finish off the nosebleed thing, mm-hmm. uh, they also did one after a, a heavy um, sort of typhoon had gone through. Yeah, uh, they found yeah. all the nosebleeds had reduced because the um, the particles had been washed out of the air. Oh, so, right. so that means basically that it proved that the nosebleeds were due to particles and not to the gamma doses. Uh, that the nuclear industry likes to talk about so so that that was just a it just shows us the mechanism of contamination in a contaminated zone so i mean that that was my major point so anyway all right sorry do you want to uh, crack on to the next point <laughs> i was just going to say no because that's an interesting point the mechanisms of yeah. contamination it does really matter and there's different ways to get contaminated in lots of different ways. And this is the thing about the nuclear industry. We're not allowed to talk about their contamination. Like, we're just, like, we're the people of Fukushima, for example. I don't think people understood that 30, 80,000 people are involved in a lawsuit, that 30,000 people had nosebleeds, that large masses of the population had suffered severe consequences. I think most Americans think a very small portion of the population, some kids, but not all children. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's been well, downplayed so horrendously. It's Yeah, but, you know, so, so if you could turn around, and that's another little sort of statistical trick that gets pulled, you know, they'll say, look, in Japan, there's hardly any increase in cancer, you know, but you sort of narrow it down to Fukushima, you know, where there's, two million or sorry but yeah there's about two million two and a half million people in that prefecture um so you know that when, when the tsunami hit there's three hundred thousand children so yeah so not not you know it, it, statistically there's not many kids when it's spread over the whole of japan but it's it's a it's a very small population in quite a large area they're also uh, not with, old enough it has not been enough time for them to manifest cancer but let's well, talk about 200. There's two hundred. There's two hundred thyroid cancers as of uh, I think it was March. Wow. Uh, it was no, sorry, May. May was the last one, and um, it was two two hundred uh, thyroid cancers confirmed, um, and all were found with uh, cancerous growth. One of them was found with non-cancerous. So, uh, but the thing is that uh, when we're talking on the second video uh, that I've done, <clears throat> the part two, that is two families talking. Now, one family left within days. As she was driving away, the first major explosion happened at Fukushima, right, as she was driving out of Fukushima to uh, Satima uh, uh, Prefecture. And the, and the other one stayed in place. Now, the first one, obviously, was living much nearer. She was in the actual area that, that's now sealed off. Um, and so, you know, but, but she had to move anyway. It gave her the impetus to move. The other one stayed in place, as as described as the nuclear industry's best advice. She stayed in place with her family, hmm. right? So the other one said, yeah, nosebleeds, all that, you know, but then said that there was no more health effects. The one that stayed in place, that one turned around and had uh, it, they ended up with the uh, finding out when they moved out of Fukushima, they, they had her tested because she had a sore throat. Oh, uh, oh dear, it was thi- it, she had a thyroid disorder. Disorder, 
Um, and then a bit later on, the mother was diagnosed with a thyroid oh disorder. Oh, well, right. So, so that that is the sort of uh, that's the kind of testimony that really shows you not, not only sort of the path of how things work. It was the dust. It wasn't the gamma. The person actually who, in theory, had the worst gamma was living nearest to the uh, sort of uh, nuclear plant. <coughs> but, um, you know, she moved out. She moved, I think it was on the 13th or 14th. It says it on the video, uh, within two or three days. So literally, yeah, it was probably the third day, the 14th, because that's when the, the big explosion happened, I believe. Huh. So so at the end of the day, that's that does show us that, uh, you know, that the evacuation route is the correct route to take and to take it quickly with transparency. But, you know, if you're going to say to people, just stay indoors and don't worry about it, the dose isn't high enough. Well, you know, maybe only a percentage of the population, maybe, maybe it'll only be, you know, 6% of the population as opposed mm -hmm. to 1% if there wasn't a nuclear accident so only five percent more and it's you know it's statistically you know it's, it's not economically viable to sort of sort them out and you know you, you you don't really know that radiation caused it anyway that's the nuclear argument mm -hmm. uh, but when you look on the ground you know that's not only 200 kids with thyroid cancer that doesn't include the kids that live outside the prefecture. There are kids that are, do get thyroid cancer or thyroid disorders, mm -hmm. and they're not being counted, you know. So we have some evidence of that. Um, and, you know, considering how secretive the Japanese are with their Tokyo 2020 revival plan for uh, Fukushima. Oh, could you uh, explain that? That is... Just can you give a brief synopsis for people who have never heard of that? Because that will knock people off their seats. Well, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, since the first year that happens, so we're talking about the year where all these people were getting nosebleeds and skin rashes and the cows were getting spots on their, their uh, hides and all the rest of it. They turned around and uh, they were trying to sell, you know, the carrots uh, the uh, from Fukushima. This is the PR company. It's WPP LLC, to right. be precise, actually. So Martin Sorrell, the head of that company, uh, well, up until last week. Um, but, uh, you know, so he, what WPP would do is work with TEPCO and the government, or mainly TEPCO, really, uh, to smooth over and manage the, situ the disaster, like they did with the BP Gulf oil spill, uh, like they did in uh, County Mayo here in Ireland when they were trying to uh, drill for gas, you know. So, uh, and there was a big PR campaign, uh, you know, against the people that didn't want want them having a gas uh, plant off the shore, you know, near their homes, which is kind of fair enough. But uh, we, we could have a whole other discussion about that. Um, so the Japanese people that, that were sort of uh, kind of left in place, you know, they, they, the, the UN has stepped forward and said, no, this was wrong, you know women and children, you know, have a higher uh, sort of uh, damage rate than a, the sort of a, a grown man, which all these doses are based on. So they're, they're, they're more likely to get cancers and things and suffer from various other health uh, effects from uh, sort of lower doses of radiation. But more importantly, these particles that are getting, you know, go in through the skin if they're small enough, They'll go into your bloodstream and they'll go past your blood-brain barrier. Now, your blood-brain barrier is really important to keep toxins and nasty stuff out. But if the particles are too small, they'll just go through, you know. And this is this, there's been peer-reviewed studies on that. Um, and one can only assume with the stories that where they're talking about the uh, microparticles on the simplyinfo.org uh, sort of uh, new article um, – you know, we we know that uh, that that's an issue as well, which you no know, nobody's looked into at all. They only recognised that small particles were damaging to health. Well, uh, let's be clear, Sean. They ago. they have not looked into much. They make an effort to not no. look into much. Period. Not, into, not for any pollution, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, for I whatever mean, industry. It's. Yeah. I was that's telling cool. you about this story in Hamburg that. I'm nonplussed about it. It's an $8 million project where they're 
so-called fixing the groundwater in Hanford. They're going to bury a site, put plants back on top of it, a highly radioactive area that used to be. We know they can't remediate the land there. That's ridiculous. They're going to put bees, bee, bee, bees on there. They're going to raise bees. They're putting yeah, well, bee bees hives. actually are more sensitive to radiation. Uh, than I think that's why, the, honestly, I think that's why they're doing it. They want to see if the bees will grow. If they can grow bees, they know it's radiated. It's not, you know, it's a livable. The only problem is, let's say the, the radiation is low enough to, so bees can propagate. They're still going to be radioactive. The honey is still going to be radioactive. Plutonium is well, 24,500 years. Sorry, folks. It's not going away. No, definitely not. I mean, that's and, a ridiculous uh, statement, remediation. There's no remediation. Yeah. But, you know, you've got flash flooding, you've got earthquakes, you've got a whole series of Please, things. Please, let's don't can... talk. Did you hit my hot button on the? Did... I actually put up yeah. a... a a, a podcast here called The Proximity Factor, and I'm going to do another one uh, actually this weekend on The Proximity Factor because there's stuff. Uh, I mean, today there's a tornado at Hanford out in the desert, a fire tornado. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've got to fess up. I'm kind of into the uh, Trident Plowshares. Uh, I'm movement, sure you because, know, you know, we all look in our own backyard because we're nervous, but I will and, tell you uh, what. People ought to well, look into gonna... this effort to close Columbia Generating Station because if that has an earthquake there at well the over 6.6 well that plant is operating and we even have a small meltdown like we had at three mile island where they can just cap it for two weeks and we're good to go hanford yeah, yeah. will most likely blow up and have a fire that will spew radioactive contamination for hundreds of thousands of years and it is bye bye north oh. america like I'll, 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 give, I'll, I'll give everybody a bit of a heads up as we're talking about one of the nuclear uh, uh, bomb factories, uh, Hanford. Um, there's also Livermore. Uh, oh, God, uh, sort of yes. And interestingly enough, uh, just outside the Livermore Labs are, uh, 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 well, have been a, a wonderful bunch of people who've done talks uh, discussing, you know, war and nuclear weapons and, uh, you yeah. know, what have you. Uh, there's a whole series of these talks actually on the Eon 3. That's uh, oh, Echo, yeah, they're great. Uh, Oscar, November 3, E-O-N 3, Eon 3. So basically, if you go to their YouTube channel. Um, and, I'll have a uh, link yeah, also to five, them. Five uh, yeah. interviews so far. They may put some more up yeah, I don't know. Uh, but they're very interesting. And uh, uh, there's uh, one I'm just going to shout out because it was very good. Uh, it was it was Doctor. Where is he? Oh, I've gone, gone past. Yeah, here we go. Uh, oh, here we are. It's Doctor Robert Gould. Oh, yeah, that was from, really a good one. I saw that. That actually, I still remember. Yeah, yeah, and uh, basically, it's only come up twenty three hours ago. These, so uh, they're they're. That one only came prep. up twenty three hours ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He That's had what I'm one saying. about a year ago on there. That was awesome. Like, really yeah. great. Yeah. Well, he's, he's done a nice little chat there. And uh, he's talking about the connection between climate change and nuclear weapons. And mm. uh, anyway, you, you can go and uh, have, a, have a wee look at that. And if you don't believe in climate change, pop over to Potholer54. And uh, one of his last videos, the third last video, uh, discusses all the arguments against climate change you know being you know denying climate change and uh, uh and bust them totally he does a very good job actually so uh just thought i'd add that <laughs> and, and well done to all those uh, who protested outside livermore and that's uh, awesome you know, now is there a nuclear room. power plant near livermore very close to there uh, well, they, it's Livermore Labs, isn't it? Were, yeah, uh, but I mean, is there like... See, the difference is Hanford is a very unique facility, unlike anything else. There's not comparable to Livermore. Because Hanford is on over 500 acres of land, and they had okay. eight... I think they had eight plutonium processing plants all along the river, which they moved in. Sure. And then they have yeah. these big gaping holes of just waste that are collapsing because they didn't build them 
to the specifications, no. of course, that the scientists at the time said was necessary. So now the yes. chickens have come home to roost, and we are gonna we are in serious people. Uh, I mean, it is motivating me to speak out a lot because people do not understand the dire danger the proximity factor proposes to the entire northern, I mean, if not the planet. Because well, there is an up, there is an upside to this, though. There okay. is an upside. I love that. Believe. Thank you. Yeah, and it's also an up. It's also an update on a conversation we had in one of our earlier podcasts, and we were discussing Holden Norwegian nuclear reactor. Do you remember the thorium research reactor, MTR? Yes. Yes. Do you remember we talk, and and we and uh, you know we. Uh, I got blamed basically for making vi- uh, videos go viral and and uh, and stimulated a lot of conversation because in people Norway. Hate thorium, they hate nuclear. Yeah, and and uh, anyway, I've, I, I have to fess up. I, I, I you know, I, I, maybe I, I was a little bit involved in the sort of viral aspects of that. Uh, the, well, those videos, um, but what, you know. And, uh, and and they've closed Holden down last week, by the way. So one year later, right? You have and, to fess up. Okay, then. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. So that's that's quite interesting. So, uh, but, um, yeah, no, I, I got a lot of stick, actually, for uh, because what happened was uh, loads of people were contacting the Norwegian sort of nuclear regulatory people and what have you, and... Um, they're, they're a bit annoyed with me. So, give but the then, backstory of what we were requesting. Give a little bit of the backstory of what what you what was what the videos were about. Well, we were discussing the uh, fuel rods in there. There was an accident, mm-hmm. so a fuel rod melted down partially, partially melted down, uh, which just means that they took it out and it melted down in the box that they were supposed to store it in, and you know, and it, it released a lot of gases and. Uh, they had to shut the place down, and you know. But this the, this particular reactor, you know, there's been uh, uh, various people saying, look, you know, this is, you know, I mean, this is just too old and it's too dangerous. And you know, to be honest with you, Europe has another sixty of these ancient reactors, you know, which they use for uh, uh, various nuclear experiments. Um, sixty. That's six mm-hmm. zero, but everyone uh but anyway but this was the <laughs> so they can be this, shocked this, this, these numbers mean this, nothing this, to people this, they're just this, numbers people are numb from the numbers sean yeah 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 but anyway holden basic i don't know how many would be in america we might be shocked to find that figure out how many what uh, how many how many uh, research reactors there are in america i knew but, that number there's a lot there are quite, uh, oh, over a uh, hundred so, uh, but they're all capable of a mini, a mini Chernobyl. Um, so, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, though, this one was the oldest one out of the lot, and uh, it was used by Russia, the U.S. You know, there's about 16 countries that were investing in this thing, and they just kept it going and going because it was, you know, profit. Uh, it was uh, cheap to do so, um, and people were trying to get it shut down in Norway, you know, because they they were living near it, and you know, there were scientists that were saying, well, look, you know, this isn't. No, you know, we need a new reactor. They were probably saying, you know, and they probably still are, but uh, but but we 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 should close this one down because it's so old. It's had so many little problems. I mean, there was even f- uh, financial misconduct with this thing. You know, you can imagine all this funding coming in <laughs> from all these sources and backhanders and God knows what. I have no idea. But um, anyway, so but you know, there were there was some good. Uh, sort of uh, the, the nuclear regulatory so, uh, organization in uh, Norway was actually quite good. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I gave them a heads up. I said, you know, I think they're doing a good job um, because they were they were trying to keep on top of what uh, what was going on at this reactor, you know, and they, they did fairly good job of it, you know, and they were fairly thorough, you know, they were well, they were thorough. And um, so, but but there was some little questions that sort of we were asking that that about some other releases that might have come from Holden that may have been hushed up, but you know that was denied, and you know. But anyway, this argument to and fro, and we, you know, um, so <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, yeah, it was just really cool news to hear that they've closed it down, you know, and it's it's good news for the people around there. They're, it's not far from Oslo, and I, I remember I was measuring uh, using Eurodet mapping i was able to find out that that uh, there was high levels of lead 
just near Oslo, the, the capital of Norway, wow. right, is a kind of fjord. So sometimes when the wind is kind of blowing north, which it sometimes did, uh, if they if they had a release of various isotopes, you know, because they got too much, but they release it, they're refueling or whatever, uh, the, all this stuff would travel up the fjord and just lodge in this fjord. It had nowhere to go with these big mountains around. You know, it was a cul-de-sac. Uh, and that's Oslo, basically, yeah? So, uh, yeah, it was, I, I wasn't happy for many years about, uh, about what was going on there, but I didn't know it was Holden until a bit later. I eventually sussed out that, uh, that it must've been Holden, you know, because of the, uh, quantity, but, um, yeah. I have so a question to ask you when they close these research places down, do yeah. they take out any, like, is you know how, like, on a nuclear reactor, there's ways, at least in the States, we, they can't move it. There's no place for it to go, so it sits there. Is that the same issue with these research facilities where there's oh. nuclear waste they just leave on site? Or I've been told that, like, at the University of or Oregon State University, right up the road up here in Corvallis, that there's no danger at all, no active radioactivity whatsoever coming out of those n nuclear facilities. Yeah, well... I you know, I mean, at the end of the day, as far as the Holden goes, I mean, there is some good news there for the workers. I mean, <clears throat> apparently uh, there's 160 workers involved, with, which yeah. is, you know, is a good, is, you know, it's a small, small, you know, there'd be, there'd be a bigger, big employee in the area where they are. You know, a lot of families would be relying yeah, on the Yeah, well, income. those people have been invested there, right? Sure, sure, and and they're not they're not you know they're not bad people. They yeah. they you know I, I'm I, you know I'm anti nuclear, but uh, but these are you know very professional scientists yeah. uh, engineers. So what's going to happen? They're not getting the sack. They're going to be put onto decommissioning. You know, which is a growing right. area. Right, right. Norway is already involved in decommissioning. You know, if you go to Bologna dot org, um, who uh, basically um, uh, told me off. <laughs> spamming everyone um and uh but but they did sort of appreciate the fact that i did fess up as well you know on the blog i did say well okay maybe i was a little bit you know uh pithy with my headlines but oh, uh but yeah so whatever yeah whatever so uh but but <laughs> I mean I mean if the if the uh, what's it the news of the, what's it the Daily Mail can do it why can't I that's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, the thing is, you got you want to get people's attention because you can't just say it's like the title of this show. I I actually think I messed up on the title and I think I have to go in and edit it. But you know it, it is about health effects. But I think my conversations really when I think about them are really about like the involuntary you know, participants in the nuclear industry. Like, we're all, we're, you know, we're all voluntary or involuntary. If you either accept it, okay. You don't accept it, you're, all of you are going to get sick. Everyone's going to get sick. This is just a killer industry. There is no well, redeeming qualities. To I, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, is that the everyone will get sick. I, I, I tend to not sort of go, go down those lines. I do because uh, you know why? Because it's not just this generation this is a contamination sure. thing that affects generations to come it messes with your dna yeah. they have no but, control over it and they have massive amounts of it and we have had a massive increase in cancer and death since it came on the scene and oh I, well, absolutely i reject yeah, the idea that oh it's that not the main cause i think that they have been lying about it i think it is the main cause well, I would say that there are a few things, a few things in, in the environment that are causing this, you know, and and the cancers have been around before radiation, uh, unless you go, as we mentioned before, if you go to the study that was done on the, the, the Egyptian, well, mummies from around the world, not just the Egyptian mummies, but uh, mummies from South America and everywhere, and they couldn't find any traces of cancer, you know, in any statistical figure at all. Um, so the, the cancers thing, you know, it's, it, it, there's a lot of things that would upset us, but, uh, certainly radiation, you don't, you know, if you've got cesium in the, the environment, it's there for three, 600 years, basically, you know, um, if you've got things like plutonium in the environment, that's there for longer, you know, uh, what, what are the health uh, damages? We don't quite know, but we know that people can live in sort of semi-radioactive areas, 
uh, you know, people have lived up on mountains, you know, uh, with radon, uh, but they do suffer a, st- a very small st- a statistical chance of getting cancer. But it is more than if you were, weren't living on the mountain. But then again, if you lived on the mountain and you liked the mountain, you might accept the risk, you know, but you're more likely to fall off the mountain. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Yeah, but, but it's but up the bottom, to you to decide you know, the risk. Like at least with yeah. the, on, living on the edge of the mountain, you know you're living at a risk. You choose that. Yeah. With this nuclear right. stuff, people have yeah. been yeah. lied to 100%, even the workers that work there. That's why we yeah. can't hate the workers because they have been brainwashed and lied to. And what happens is yeah. very pathetic. Every single nuclear plant, I don't know how it is in Europe, but here, if you get sick, they don't know you. They don't like you. They pay as little as they can pay. You're up on your own. Your family goes broke. It is the most disgusting thing. People die in abject poverty. They use their pension plans to pay the hospitals. It is a shakedown. Like where you guys live, you have universal health care. So you yeah. don't well, go in broke. Ireland, actually, in Ireland, it's it's kind of more social democrat. We've got the sort of more of the Norwegian system, which is kind of a social democrat system. But you know, if I want to go to the doctors, I've got to pay fifty euro. Uh, dentist, I have to pay for. Um, if I had an accident tomorrow, I ended up in the hospital, um, I'd have to pay a hundred euro for the the ambulance, uh, but the mm. emergency treatment would be free. Wow. Uh, you know. So, but you, you know, then again, it's uh, uh, it's a bit slow on the emergency treatment side. You know, if you go into on the you know the kind of Medicare thing that they've got in Ireland. Um, but, I've been through uh, that. I don't have. I don't pay health care for profit. Yeah. So I've gone into the I mean, emergency it, room and they look at me like, no health care. Take a seat. Yeah, you know what but I mean. Because you know, they they don't think they're going to get paid, or what happens when you you know you owe, you have to negotiate. If you like, for me, I always negotiate with them. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you had if you had a sort of terminal how, illness, how are the people treated in Japan medically when their children get sick? Like, do, do they at least they, get treated? They don't. They, they they don't have uh, in theory. They don't have um, a sort of social care. Uh, they can get some support from the government, but I, I'm, I'm not sure about the the health stuff, you know. Um, and uh, but but obviously, there's the studies done by the Fukushima Medical uh, University mm-hmm. Hospital and what have you. Um, so basically, they're, they're they've got the sort of the the purse strings, if you like. Are you the know, doctors uh, the ones speaking out? Are the doctors shocked? Well, no, the doctors can't say anything because if they do, they they could face, I think it's five years in prison. They sure ought to face five years in prison. They ought to decide we're going to do it starting X date, all of us. Let them throw every doctor in jail. Some doctors have stood up and said, look, now this is wrong. There are doctors, there are, there's plenty of testimony on YouTube. Uh, I mean, certainly on that, um, the the, uh, Tokyo trend, uh, Tokyo. uh, it, Tokyo Brown Tabby uh, video uh, translation that I've got on my ArcLight 2011 um, YouTube channel. Uh, you'll, you'll see there's a guy talking there, and he's he, you know he's a doctor is discussing you know the sort of uh, health issues and you know uh, in a sort of very clear and open way. Uh, but there is lots of other testimony from doctors uh, you know in Japan who and scientists and uh, you know health professionals you know like Mika Noro who's also in that video uh, the which is in Japanese but it's got subtitles you know. Um, so uh, and and in fact actually those that 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 video that I put up with uh, Tokyo Brown Tabby, I mean, I was in contact with her and she was really good, um, lovely person and uh, really did some good work for quite some quite a few bloggers with her translation. She got mm-hmm. targeted, uh, but um, all her, she had loads of videos up, you know, straight out of, you know, she'd just get them off the Japanese uh, TV, she'd subtitle them, translate them, subtitle them, put them up. And she had loads. And... Um, they all got taken. Her whole channel, the first one, got uh, shut down. I think. I think her second channel uh, remained up, but they 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 did a huge copyright strike on it to to pull it down because it was so damning. Um, so, but those those uh, videos do exist. You know, if if you hunt around, but more importantly, people are aware of what what happened, so they can talk about it. Um, that's why the testimony is so important from the people from Fukushima. 
because uh, you know that, that have uh, been internally displaced and uh, you know the ones that you know if you're in Fukushima you're probably really under pressure not to um, yeah. you know not to actually uh, uh, sort of speak out it's, it's a real thing and we talked about it uh, with uh, when I was interviewing uh, Timothy Masso he said uh, the uh, self-censorship you know after yeah. all, all the happened you know uh, people know that the they've gone after japanese translators because they've been spreading the news to to uh oh, wow, to the really? rest of us and you know i i had a personal experience with a japanese translator i was working with uh, in the uk we, and we had to stop working together because of the pressures that we were under um, from uh, various sources um, but i don't want to talk too much about that because it's, it's a very difficult thing um, but uh, the bottom line is, though, is that, that this is going on over the place. But it's very and, uh, real. So evidently, it's enough to keep you from talking about it publicly. I mean, that's called uh, coercion, essentially. You absolutely. Get coerced well, you, you into know, silence. I, yeah, yeah. No, there was a, there was a, a, a kind of a hack. I, I did. This is what the and... nuclear industry. See, this is why I say we are still in World War Two, post World War Two, the Manhattan Project. I actually say that we're in World War Three right now. The Manhattan Project yeah. was World War Three. They transformed it. We're in. And this fake right. letter by Trump. This is why I think it's super important. And it made me th relate to this stuff that we're talking about. Because essentially this anonymous letter that was given to, to the press, to the New York Times, that says, don't worry, those of us on the inside are keeping crazy Grandpa Trump from doing the wrong thing when he's in his crazy moods. That's treason. And what's interesting is us on the inside are taking care of it to make sure he does the right thing, right? Well, what's, he's the President oh. of the United States. They don't have that authority. And that is treason. Those people that are around him, though, this is the point. They were made an exception to the rule by this Republican Senate because they are military men, generals, both General Mad Dog Mattis and John Kelly, both yeah. hardened criminals in my view. They were both given approval to be Trump's right-hand man as White House advisors. So they no longer call him General Kelly, they call him uh, John Kelly, the president's advisor, and John Mattis. They don't refer to them as General Mattis, and you don't ever hear anybody refer to him as Mad Dog Mattis. But I, I, I will say, I will say, Mattis basically, he's uh, he did actually stop Trump nuking uh, <laughs> Iran by the sound of it. So. Yes, he did. No, no, sorry, but the no, point actually... is, when he did that, he should have gone to Paul Ryan and said, "We have got to get this guy out of office. Mike Pence can accomplish the task for us." Period. And that's what he should have said. As much as yeah. I hate Mike Pence, I, I personally know what a horrible monster he is because I've told you this story. He investigated me, falsely accused me of saying I wanted to murder his staff. I got investigated. It was declared a false report because it was. No, no. But yeah. that is the kind no. of retribution in America we are already living in. Because it happened way before I mean, the Trump. Thing, the, the, the Trump. social media control is a whole other thing. But I mean, this I've been is doing the thing with the Fukushima thing, with the radioactivity. The A's, it's falling apart. They are the mm. kegs are falling apart. Hanford is falling apart. Where you're at, it's not good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the bottom line is, is that there's a lot of pushback. You know, if you, I know, if you, but like, you know what? There's not a lot of in, science. <laughs> in Norway, Unfortunately, they, we don't they, have the they, answers. You, yeah, but if if you look at Norway, they've denuclearized, and now they're only into doing uh, decommissioning, and that's going to grow. You know, there's another sixty of these uh, reactors, and they're all going to have to be, de uh, you know, in Europe alone, and they've got to be uh, decommissioned. And then there's a load of reactors, proper reactors that need decommissioning. And there's thousands of sort of contaminated sites from uh, uranium mines. Well, we got to do, Sean, is think of a way that they base, can make money there. off of that, though. But the bottom line is, though, it's going to cost, you know, but it'll be a thriving industry. And, you know, I think the nuclear industry is waking up to this. The investors are waking up to this. And Who's I it think one cost? of the, the taxpayer. I, I, I think one of the reasons Holden was closed down is so that it would offer these 160 plus any uh, sort of new students the opportunity to learn how to decommission 
a nuclear facility and clean it up from radionuclides. And it is possible. It is, every, all contamination, there are solutions to, to most contamination. You can put in plants that pull up, extract isotopes. Uh, there's various things that can be done, you know, various mosses and what have you. They can be harvested and, you know, and then locked away. Um, obviously, the actual... you do it I, right. You're giving them a lot of credit. Right. But, but as, as if we put, which is happening anyway, a load of money into decommissioning, they will develop really good systems of cleaning up and maybe even one day a solution with that is that actually muck. true you know what that's actually the only rational solution that we have going on here is just to like embrace it learn how to live yeah. with it learn how to protect yourself still enjoy your life that's why i say then, happiness is resistance yeah, and learn how to clean it up. And, you know, we're, we're, we are on the way to that. You know, there's there's certain problems with Fukushima reactors getting in there and sorting them out for the next few hundred years. And, uh, you know, certainly they've said in Chernobyl, you know, they've admitted that there's no way they can get near that reactor, that single reactor, never mind J Japan's three reactors. They can't get near that single reactor for, you know, at least another hundred years. Yeah. So, you know, they've yeah. admitted that Japan is trying to say, oh, well, we'll we'll have that all sorted in 30 or 40 years. Don't worry. You know, so they've got all the earthquakes for the next hundred years, at least, you know, if we go by the very, uh, I would say, conservative figures given by the uh, sort of Ukrainian uh, government, you know. Uh, so I, I, I would say it's going to be hundreds of years to get near that core. But, you know, maybe in a hundred years. Say that again. May, Go back technology. again. What did you say? They know all of the earthquakes. What did you say? What did you just say? Well, in the next hundred years, they can't get to the cores in Fukushima for three years, can they? Uh, sorry, a hundred years. Oh, at you know. least. They can clean They're up dreaming. all. They can clean the building. There they is no the cores. Build. I don't believe there's cores there. I think well, they're in no, China I, I, syndrome. I think they're just like, boom, it's done. By no, well, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure because of uh, the scientific studies that have been done that there is something down there and it's I'm too sure. hot to go. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and, and we know that there's been measurements done. Uh, we don't know the full story of yeah. all the reactors. Yeah, they have moment. no idea what's down there, and they're not getting in there for a sure. super long. Unless you know, but there is a possibility. Well, I, though, I mean, you know, that we, they we're invent going something, don't we? Because we're, we're talking about something we can't really see, and we, we only have some evidence that it's there, and the evidence is good that you know there's definitely really hot stuff down there. Uh, it's melted fuel or fuel broken fuel rods or whatever it is, uh, probably melted. And you know, in Chernobyl, it's a big blob basically uh, sitting in. Basement. Um, now you know. So, if if it cooled down in Chernobyl, there's a chance it cooled down in Fukushima, um, and there was certainly uh, a lot of water applied. And you know, the other thing people have to bear in mind is that the shoreline dropped, you know, and when it dropped, it raised up the water level. That they built that place, basically. The whole of the Fukushima prefecture, Miyagi, that whole plateau coming from the big mountains up the center of Japan, they are basically a water, there's a shallow water table there. So underneath Fukushima, before the um, earthquake, they, they basically had this river running, right? And they would pump out the water from the basement, and that was fine. After the nuclear accident, the basement had dropped, what was it, a meter or how many feet? I don't know. But anyway, it dropped a bit, which would have brought it nearer it or like further feet, into, yeah. Was, yeah, into the water table, right? Which And then there's no pumps to pump the water. Mm -hmm. So one of the resultants, and there was a lot of steam, if you remember, coming out, because I remember that in, on, on any news we had uh, various people, and, you know, I did a bit myself, was having a look at the videos live, when, when, when they were steaming and what have you, you know? Um, so so basically, it, it was highly like... something sad, Sean? I could have cared less when it was going on. I'm like, oh, wow, those people over there are having bad problems. What's that? I never looked once at any of it. Oh, right, right, right. right. Until yeah, well, about I... a year and a half later. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I mean, that, that was kind of a lot of boring stuff, really. But but it was it had some interest and it did highlight a few problems. It certainly actually. changed yeah. your life, didn't it? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, I think to be honest with you, you know, I, I think when I was younger, before I got married and had kids and all this, I was I was very involved with uh, uh, CND and the Green Party in England and the mm. Greenpeace friends of the earth and you know it's like uh, recycling you know when it wasn't really fashionable and all this kind of stuff so uh you know save the rainforest and all those types of campaigns so i mean I, I think at the end of the day it was uh you know i got married had kids you know got knuckle down uh I, I did some stuff for my local community i think i spent about 10 right. 15 years doing charity work and working with vulnerable young people that kind of stuff uh but i was i was bringing up my kids that was a priority mm -hmm. they, they grew up um and then when fukushima happened i, I had a quite a good understanding of what happened after chernobyl mm -hmm. although to be honest with you after chernobyl you, you there was there wasn't the wealth of information that you can see on youtube um which you know may change at some point uh, but there is a lot of uh, information downloaded onto people's hard drives and, you know, backup files. And um, so, you know, th this information will, will not completely disappear. Um, and, and things like these testimonies that, you, that, that we were discussing earlier on in this uh, di uh, talk, which you're going to be linking to. Uh, these things, are, they want to shut them up. They want to close them down and they want to call them fake news. And, you know, you've got NATO, you know, turning around and they're, they're uh, doing the uh, sort of uh, policing of Facebook, yeah. <laughs> NATO. For of God's course sake. they are. That's what Facebook's for. Of course. It's the Atlantic, they are. Uh, Atlantic Council, or I mean, FJ. I people get upset. Like really, just I mean, for real, get get a grip. Like that is yeah. the thing. But that exactly if happening. you want to change yeah. that, this is what I say. <laughs> if we want to change that, then we have to have real democracy, and that requires that the population participate. And not just thirty yeah. percent or twenty five percent. This is why we have but what we I, have. I also want to do, come up with a solution. You know that if say, just say, coming up to the midterms, right? There's a couple of things could happen. You know, midterm elections. Um, that there's one Facebook, thing that's going to happen. Facebook the Republicans are going to win, and everybody is going to get filtered out of existence. Um, and, you know, so if you want to talk about Trump or this or that, uh, if you want to talk about nuclear or you want to talk about fracking or water protection or anything else, if you want to talk about anything, you'll probably find that you won't get any hits <laughs> because at the end of the day, you know, and if you do, it will probably just be sort of bots just trawling the web, you know, it'll be Google. <laughs> um, so at the end of the day, it's like what we're looking at really is that there's a lot of censorship going on and it's been going on you know we discovered it it's been going on now for two or three months and you know what they Sean, use... that's why i'm part of kepw.org right here in eugene oregon it's eugene peaceworks opened up a community oriented free speech for sure. our rights radio station it's a non-profit they've got a 5013c non-profit and we're starting from scratch. No big funders. My, the station manager and I are going to hit the pavement. And so we've targeted several store people that we know. We went through a list of stores. We're just going to start asking for people to help support us. Because yeah. we need, we have, they are playing this radio podcast without censorship. <laughs> I mean, mm. where else? They let me read Helen Caldicott's, but I'm reading it. New Nuclear But if danger. you try posting it on Facebook, you'll get about three views from it. You know what? It doesn't matter. I'll get three views about it anyways, even before the censorship. I, I, do, I, do have a, I do have a bit of a solution, actually, I've come up with over the last sort of uh, okay, week. Okay, well, so. let's hear it because that would be good. Oh, I've got a wee bird. We are in an hour in. Do you want to continue for a little bit while we have another hour? Yeah, well, I could I could discuss my my Weibo account. Okay, so hold on just one second. Okay, let's give it a little six minute second break so we can get into the other half hour. Sure. Welcome to the Age of Vision Radio Show with your host Lonnie Clark, where we constantly remind you that love is greater than fear, and happiness is resistance. Well, thank you for joining us. This is Lonnie Clark again uh, with the Age of Fission Radio Show. And today is 
uh, 9 8 2018 and I am here again with Sean McGee from nuclearnews.net that's nuclear-news.net right Sean Absolutely spot on well uh, well uh, collaborate And it is a place that you yeah. n must uh frequent because uh frankly there's a lot of great information on that page if you want to pay attention to Nuclear contamination and nuclear issues. Anything related to, like, nuclear, as it says, nuclear news. Not just nuclear waste, which is one of my hot buttons, as I talk about it all the time. But nuclear weapons, nuclear propagation, the nuclear liars, the, the nuclear victims. <laughs> so, thanks for joining us, Sean. Let's get back on point. We have about an hour left, and I want to thank you for sticking around and doing this interview with us again. Oh, that's okay. So uh, anyway, we discussed the uh, videos I'll put up on my YouTube channel, ArcLight2011. That's A-R-C-L-I-G-H-T-2011 on YouTube. Uh, so there's there's two videos there at the moment. There will be more uh, testimonies from people from Fukushima. Um, and just before that, there's also a video on the Holden, uh, which was uh, a nuclear reactor that we didn't like, did we, uh, did we? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, dear Lonnie, we 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 slapped that that that. Uh, oh, I was going to say something rude there, but uh, anyway, we <laughs> definitely we definitely uh, did our little bit, and uh, so that's closed down, which is a good thing. Nobody was made unemployed. Uh, they're all going into decommissioning. So Norway is now one of the large decommissioning places without having a nuclear reactor. Very good, and. Um, so I think we were then discussing, uh, well, you know, getting this information out, you know, let's go back to the media. We did a, a talk on that in the previous podcast. But uh, obviously the media at the moment in the last couple of months has got crazy and the last few weeks has got even worse. And as we come up to the midterms and the UK as well as also sort of going to war with Russia, uh, they're doing a cyber war. They've admitted to it now. So they're going to take out any left wing kind of uh, environmentalists along the way as well is, uh, you know, the Putin puppets or the useful idiots, as they like to uh, refer to us. Um, so oh, so am uh, I considered a Putin puppet? Uh, if you have any left-wing values at all, yes. Uh, and that, that was stated. I've got a video on one of my other channels, which has got the uh, Atlantic Council, the people that are now uh, sort of policing Facebook. Um, and they're sitting there telling, look, in, in Europe, all these left-wingers, they said, most people are left-wing in Europe. All these left-wingers, they're just put, uh, they're useful idiots, you know, Putin's puppets. He actually said that. Wow. Do you know when he said it? He said it in March of 2016 way before the election he also said whoever wins right while everybody thought oh hillary's going to win they were actually saying no trump could win and they were saying you know we want we want two percent from all of europe and that's what trump did you know so you know this is all you know it's it, it, these people are very powerful and they support Sean, trump. do you know They're about quite... circo s-e-r-c-o yeah, yeah, the security company that's really rubbish. Why? No, they're, really they're not bad. just security. They're into everything. Yeah, I know. They're, they're just mad. Yeah, they have something people. called the Trump Project. Yeah, oh, is that to get rid of Trump or support him? No, it's about the what's so-called deep state. It's like the, really bizarre. Anyways, we're sort of getting off track here. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Edward Snowden, are we? Like. Uh, I mean, this is that. the thing about our Otherwise, voices being suppressed. They on. can suppress us, Sean, but guess what? The contamination is still there. People are going to get sick. Children, are, people are still going to be sterile. Young men will still be sterile. We'll be seeing yeah. our youth have heart attacks or babies born with holes in their heart or children with thyroid problems and that develop into cancer or maybe not cancer, but they have thyroid or they have lifetime problems with you know so i i don't understand why the nuclear industry chooses to lie about its negative effects well it saves money you know and it saves the nuclear industry it as well. doesn't it ends up costing so much more because if people understood if they took preventive care the cost of taking care of sick people is so much more expensive than telling the truth and building protection 
Yeah. I mean, I mean that might you could certainly say that uh, you know if you had a state uh, uh, sort of um, medical scheme, you know, like we do have in Europe, um, and and you know that you could certainly say that all this plastic and all these chemicals they're putting in and all this radiation and all this stuff here and all the, all these toxins and. So you could certainly turn around and say, well, yeah, all that stuff has really clogged up the hospitals. You know, if, if, if we didn't have that stuff in the environment, the hospitals would be running quite smoothly. Um, but it is. Um, exactly. In, in America, terrible. You know, you've got no cushion at all. You just have to give all your money over to to these sort of doctors and well, insurance companies, I suppose, um, and uh, basically just sort of line the pockets, you know. It's crazy, but it's anyway, just like it's, the nuclear know. weapons industry. I just read Carl yeah. Grossman's book on on this podcast station. I don't know if you saw any. They were five of them. It's not a very fat book. It was seventy pages. Nuclear weapons, weapons in space. It's about the vision for twenty twenty. I mean, yeah. I <clears throat> I couldn't believe it when Trump was saying we need weapons in space. How about space vision or space force? He didn't come up with that. So I decided to read this book. These people have been planning this. They're, they want dominance in space. And what they're talking about is having high-powered lasers in space because nuclear weapons aren't the perfect weapon in space. You can detonate them on land, but you don't want them in space. You want lasers that can just laser the... I mean, they are talking about worldwide dominance by 2020 from the space. Yeah, but if you go to, there's a guy called Thunderfoot. He's kind of pro nuke actually, but uh, but he does sure. do some good debunks. Uh, he actually did uh, Donna Dunford actually as well, but uh, he did he did one where he was looking at how lasers get used, you know, in in uh, in uh, films. Uh, basically, these laser just shot over. <laughs> And uh, and he was showing that it's really hard for a laser to hit a distant object in space, you know, especially if it was moving. So it's like, uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, I don't understand that. What I do understand no. is that I mean, we're living I mean, on a planet. The planet we're living some, on right now is completely things. contaminated. That's I'm just the saying thing. some of the claims are kind of far-reaching. You know, they're, they're not based on fact. It's kind of based on the, you know, if you want to use a laser, you've got to put it on a really solid bit of ground and, you know, have a fixed well, point. Well, this was just, everything. you know, this book was written 15, 10 years ago or something, you know. But it was, it the whole book was really fascinating about the nuclear weapons in space and the weapons program and, like, the things just, they built. Like, and reading in Helen Caldicott's book, New Nuclear Industry, I honestly, I did not realize the United States had something like ten thousand hydrogen bombs, right? Or is it a hundred thousand? Some Probably, giant, uh, some yeah, it's quite a enormous lot. number. I think number. it's ten thousand actually. I think it's ten thousand. I was like, why would you need ten thousand hydrogen bombs? Who in their right now? This is why I'm freaked out about this thing with uh, John Kelly and Trump writing this letter. See, this is my theory. <laughs> You're gonna laugh at me, but I honestly remember before I told you I thought he was like Pinochet esque. We had a fake election. It's all the same. This guy Trump has written this letter with John Kelly. This fake anonymous letter that's got them all upset so that he can look like Grandpa Trump, like he's... And then the gov the military can just run the show. Don't worry, we'll take care of it till he's out of here one way or another. That sounded like a threat, didn't it, to you? Yeah, well, it, uh, you know, to be, I saw a video of him. He was, he, was, um, he was talking to Congress or someone. And he was saying, oh, look, the Saudis are uh, basically going to give us money to drop bombs on uh, Syria. I know. Uh, and, and, of course, then Israel, Israel are bombing the crap out of Syria. So, you know, they must have been getting money from Saudi look, to do it. This is the thing. I heard, yeah. I heard this reporter well, say she's yeah. talked to aides that when, before he goes in to talk to all these dignitaries, they advise him, look, He's going to make promises we can't keep, so keep that in mind. Because he's not going to say anything else that's reasonable. He, that's not how he works. Yeah. Can you imagine the President of the United States, their aides actually have to warn 
the dignitaries of foreign nations. Yeah. Well, so, I've actually I've decided to do over the last, um, I think the last couple of months actually, is I, I, I've, de- I've de-trumped myself. Oh, well, that's a great and, uh, idea. I've, Fortunately, I've, I've, you live over there and you can. Well, I, I mean, you know, you get it a lot on the internet, but I'm, I just find myself skipping past the Trump stuff now. Well, the no. downside is the Trump stuff is about America losing our democracy. So I, I personally am speaking out because if we want our democracy, we have to value it. it yeah, the but which reason- one's up? Do you support Trump or do you support the deep state? Uh, if you support the deep well, state, well, I don't know well, what the deep state is. I'm not sure. If you mean exactly, by the, yeah. you know, <laughs> like the CIA, so, like whatever. They're the newbies. You know, it's the neoliberal. People don't understand. This is just the neoliberal agenda. It's just about money. It's mercantilism. You know, it's I mean, true I mean, fascism. The same, the same sort of uh, pressures are found in England and other European countries. I get countries that because it's to all the vary, same thing. To varying degrees, you know, to varying degrees. But look, this is uh, the point. They're poisoning us, Sean. I don't know what yeah. your water's like over there, but ours is all toxic. Our water is oh, toxic. Yes. We cannot drink our tap water. We should not shower in our shower. If it, My listeners, I hope you will get, you can buy a shower filter for like 30 bucks, for real, and put it on your shower. Because you will notice a huge difference. It may It's not perfect. It doesn't take out everything. But guess what? It's better than nothing. Because you know what they do in the States? They regulate no, 60 good. chemicals. That's it. That's all they regulate is 60 chemicals. And then they pour yeah. chlorine in the water to kill everything else. That's, that's if the EPA still exists, does it? <laughs> I, I think mean, it's been shrunk down. What did he say? We're releasing record numbers of regulations. We're proud. We're dug into Anwar. They've been wanting Anwar for 40 years. We finally got Anwar. You know how, right. they, you know how they got Anwar? But what, what is that? Anwar? Something. Anwar, a natural reserve, is the largest reserve oh, in right. Alaska. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how they got it? They put it in the tax bill. Right. Yeah, I mean they 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 do they do similar things like that rushing uh, policies through. They've well, done quite a bit you of that. You know what the UK. downside well, is? Is we can't they, they, we can't the reverse most it, though, Sean. That's Stasi the like system going ever. I mean, two months ago, I did a Novichok thing. I did an article, uh, an interview with you about Novichok. Yeah. You remember? Yes. Yes, on um, UCY.TV. You guys can find well, all of my videos from UCY.TV on YouTube. Just Google in The Age of Fission on Lonnie Clark, and you can put Sean McGee. I'm pretty sure that's the title of almost everyone he's on. And you will see them. And uh, it's our last one. It was really good, actually. Yeah, and that one, actually, what happened then was, uh, I think I don't know if I mentioned it at the time, but, I mean, Chris Busby had been, uh, uh, he had his, some, so, somebody had, dis- uh, had mm-hmm. cancelled his phone account, so he had no broadband or phone at his home. Um, that was after he did a video on Novichok. Uh, I got hacked. Yeah, I got. I spent the whole weekend getting hacked and having to reinstall Linux and getting back online and then getting hacked again. And so, uh, yeah. And then, uh, then I think there was just loads of blogs got attacked after that. And uh, and then the latest one is they've started de deplatforming people. So, you know, when we're looking at the internet and social well, media, well, good. You can sneak it, in for me because I'm this a- new, it is the new sort of, uh, you know, public square. And um, if we're going to, you know, silence people, whether they're pro-Trump or anti-Trump or in the middle, you know, then then that's going to not be a good thing. You can't, it, it, you know, if I'm talking to somebody about Trump who's pro-Trump, at least I can talk to them and discuss and say, well, hey, what's this business, you know? And uh, what about that? You know, and you can challenge and you can discuss and debate. Um and that's what happens in a public square in a democracy. Uh, it, it's sometimes unpleasant. But on the other side of the coin, you know, if you know you're on the, in the right and you've got the evidence to prove that, then you can step forward with that evidence. You know, you can then have a debate. So, you know, for, for us to turn around and say, oh, yeah, you know, kick Alex Jones off and kick this person off or that person off, whether they're right wing or left wing, you know, filter all these websites because they're all left wing websites. Yeah, I don't like Alex Jones, but I don't like the idea that he was kicked off the air, to be honest. Like, I don't like I, I mean, if, 
uh, if if we turn around and make sort of serious ac- accusations against people in some countries, not not in America because you've got the First Amendment, but in some countries, uh, you know, like for me, for instance, in Ireland, um, you know, I could be held to account in the court of law. You know, so all right, okay, I've got to be able to get my point across and uh, not insult somebody, but challenge them. I can challenge their 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 opinions. I can challenge their their ideas, uh, and I can do it publicly. Right, but you and can't call them publicly, names and say stuff ugly things to them. And I'm contactable, so they can get back to me if right. they want to do a response. We'll post that up as well. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, th- there's no legal issues there. You know, but if I turn around and I say to somebody, "You're a paedophile." publicly you know that's that's a toughie you know it's uh well if you're gonna say that to someone publicly it sure better be true and you sure better have the evidence right there to talk about exactly you need that evidence and i mean uh, you you can't just make public it's like mike pence mike pence called the capitol police and said i threatened to murder their staff that yeah. prompted the Capitol Police to contact the city of Eugene and investigate me for four days before they called me. And, you know, testimony is important. So, you know, like we, we use testimony, say, in Fukushima, these videos I've done. The, we've basically got the testimony there. Um, there's lots of it out there already. You know, uh, Nuclear Hot Seat has, cut, has uh, got the Voices from Fukushima mm-hmm. series. Uh, which is every year they get a few people to talk about their experiences from the disaster. Um, this is a slightly bigger project. We've got maybe eight, eight or ten families that we're going to eventually have uh, have uh, sort of have have a voice. On, you know, so we're going to be pu- pushing that uh, mm-hmm. those testimonies around. So, Does it have a uh, title like a unified title yet? Or are you making the videos yeah, well, and then you're going to pull them together? Uh, the, the, well, what's happening is the videos on the video channel have a unified title, and it's all part one, part two. It's quite long, mm. but there's also hashtags in there. Right. So the hashtags are to the o- OCHR, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> but the remember. hashtags are the titles. That's what well, I'm the, seeing the, as the titles. Yeah, but the hashtag also, uh, the key keywords there, there's two UN organizations, basically. Right. One is one is uh, to do with the internally displaced people of the world, you know, people that are and and externally displaced people who've left their countries, but those that also have been moved within their countries. Uh, so that's one of the organisations that I've tagged yeah. in. Another one is the UN H uh, Human Rights HRC, which is the U- Human Rights uh, uh, Commission in the UN. Um, and they, they, they actually spoke up on behalf of the uh, people of Fukushima mm. and surrounding prefectures, you know, the people that, that were contaminated. Yeah, had the problems. Human Rights Commission, right? Exactly, yeah. And so... Oh, they have to so, speak so, up. The United States left them, you so know, very the, recently. Yeah, the third, the third tag is, is CRIN, which is Child Rights International Network based in the UK. And they have a network of 4,000 children's charities. So I've put that tag in because they, they can read that. And they, you know, um, they, they rely on activists from Japan to inform them of what's going on. And they can only use peer-reviewed um, papers. You know, we have stuff from Timothy Masso that, that certainly hints at uh, some uh, biological effects going on. Uh, we've got testimony uh, but they, what they also need is uh, newspaper articles. So if you wonder why corporations would buy up all the newspapers, mm. it's because that uh, these sort of charities that want to support people in Fukushima need evidence. And their evidence criteria is either it's on the media, like the BBC, which, you know, <laughs> or CNN, <laughs> um, which you're not going to see. You're laughing as if that would right. ever happen. <laughs> and, and then, Got the, the newspapers and you've got the uh, the, uh, the the mass media online journals right. so all these uh, can be used as evidence and peer review now because we can't get either of those we have some wow. uh, we certainly have peer review uh, 
Uh, we have some evidence of that, but there's not enough studies being done into it. Nobody's investing in it. They're really trying to ignore it, as you know. Uh, and then on the other side of the coin, uh, but we do have some peer review that says, yeah, there is issues here, all right? Um, and it's comparable with Chernobyl, but in a different way, but it is comparable. So at the end of the day, we have that evidence. We have the testimonies. We have uh, lots of testimonies you know, from the first couple of months of the uh, accident. Uh, we've got studies that have been done by activists on the ground. And, and this, uh, you know, getting these out it, it, to uh, organizations like CRIN uh, basically allows us to um, uh, uh, put a report into CRIN, which they can then send out on their monthly newsletter to 4,000 different charities, you know, and big charities as well as small. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, all the sort of uh, big children charities, basically, um, but, but all around the globe, absolutely everywhere. Um, and so we're going to do a report based on all these testimonies and other testimonies, put them all together as a report, um, uh, put the peer reviewed uh, to that counters the nuclear industry's arguments as best we can, because, you know, once again, there was a funding, there's a huge funding disparate, uh, disparage between uh, what the nuclear industry is investing in their sort of biased peer review uh, to our more independent mm -hmm. peer review, you know, because we have modest, scientists. You're more modest. Absolutely. Type. Yeah. So we, we do that and we, can, we and then we can get our uh, we can get the message about Fukushima out. And of course, when I was talking about Weibo earlier, um, I've got myself a Chinese Weibo account um, and I've actually left instructions on how to get 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 one. You have to mess around with a bit of translation and this and that. But uh, ultimately, if you've got an American phone because uh, your viewers are American, or if you've got a French phone, an English phone, or a German phone, and uh, a list of other phones from Vietnam and South Korea, um, you can actually get a Weibo account in China, uh, which is a lot less censored uh, than Facebook and Google search. Um, so uh, our, our hits You're telling from me China, that Weibo from China is a lot less censored? That's correct, yes. I, you know, if you believe that, I have some land in Florida to sell you. It's all censored. I, I've got, I've got a Weibo account, uh, ArcLight two zero one one, um, and I've only just started it. I put one article up uh, about Fukushima, uh, a link to the nuclear news article with the video, uh, the videos in, uh, and then basically um, I had uh, ninety people look at it within uh, about sort of ten hours. Which isn't How actually bad. How many people bad. in China? Uh, there's one billion uh, connected to the uh, Weibo, but also it's not just China. They 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 have. Um, uh, the, if you like, for instance, when you go onto it, uh, I've put I left a link on Nuclear News. Uh, when you go onto it, um, <clears throat> that link it's it's in Chinese. So you've got to get the old cut and paste out, do a bit of Google Translate. Hmm. But it, it basically you put an email in. Uh, and then uh, you put a password in, I believe, uh, and then you have to do a code. Uh, they send an SMS to your phone, um, and then when you've got the code, you put that straight into the uh, in into where you've got to put the code. Press enter, bang, you've got a Weibo account, and um, and then when you're on Weibo, as as uh, we build up our networks, if people get on, uh, do go onto it, certainly if journalists and uh, uh, bloggers uh, who want to find information, um, especially in the next sort of six months or so, it's going to be very interesting um, because we know that Google's uh, sort of algorithms mean that you can't even search your own blog, basically. You know, um, so basically, yeah, I'm using uh, I'm using uh, uh, Weibo. I, you know, I'm going to get. I've, I've had these 90 hits. I think it's about 110 at the moment. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But the idea being is that I'm going to uh, build up a network of people. Uh, we'll have a group. And you could have different groups. You could have a group about fracking there. You could have a group about uh, nuclear. Uh, you could have a group uh, sort of uh, sharing information uh, about climate change, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, it's not necessarily that the Chinese are particularly interested in what we're doing, um, but they allow westerners to have an account and do whatever they do i suppose if you're going to start posting stuff up about um 
uh, the Dalai Lama or you're going to sort of uh, posting up uh, sort of propaganda, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, against communism or, you know, right wing stuff. Uh, yeah, you, they're going to kick you off the, the site. But if you're going to talk about environmental stuff, so, I mean, uh, there was a huge protest in 2013 against the nuclear waste dump in China and, and, and the government listened to the protesters. Mm -hmm. Right. That's crazy, isn't it? Right. No, uh, it's not was, crazy. That's how it's supposed to be. The yeah. form, in regardless so the of the form of government, they should really look out for the health of their people. That's right. the first response. As long as, as, long, as long as the anti-nuclear movement uh, wants to make uh, some voice uh, without uh, disrupting the you know social norms, I am uh, then still calling myself a nuke truther. I'm going to interrupt because that yeah. we are not just anti-nukers i'm a nuke truther and the truth is what we know about it now it kills and there's too much waste and all they do is lie now sure. if they want to I make the like industry sport. better and be honest yeah. and figure it out maybe sure. it'll work out but as so far they've done nothing but lie be deceitful act like batterers which they are i mean I, sure. they're but malicious batterers but that's kind of why why we we need to sort of uh, go off to something else, you know. I mean, at the mo at the moment we're waiting for some you know sort of uh, people to come up with a decent search engine, you know, that we can use that doesn't have an algorithm like Google. Uh, all of them have algorithms. Uh, they're all pretty well based on Google. Uh, you, you you know you're going to get filtered. You can't even search your own websites. You know you could you couldn't search Democracy Now thoroughly or any of those websites. Um, it's just a complete waste of time. Uh, the only I thing you can well, do, I can do that. Maybe you can. Maybe you're targeted. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure saying I dude. can. Search, <laughs> I'm just, when I search, right, put it this way: when I do a search on nuclear news, and I know most of the posts I put up with using certain keywords, I get limited responses. Wow. Okay. Right, I and and the more page. keywords you put in, even though you know they're in the headline, the less hits you get, and you don't get the one that you're looking for. Well, um, what kind so of protection the, software do you have on your computer or on your phone? Well, no, I've got, uh, you know, I'm I'm okay. I've got Linux, <laughs> but um, so so the bottom line is is that that I cannot search my own site because the algorithm. We'll mm -hmm. try to we'll want to put other other stuff in there yeah, as well. Yeah, you probably have to be tricky about how you search on your own site. You, you can't you can't search your own site using Google. That's what I'm saying. You can't use it using the internal search sort of thing because you get very few hits mm -hmm. and they're not always relevant. It's not very good. Um, uh, if you do it on Google Search Direct, which used to be brilliant, by the way. So this uh, is the thing, Sean. Do you think it matters that people search the internet? That people are knowing about it because I mean, it's, it's still going on. People are still not demanding, at least in America. Nobody over here, when if you say nuclear, it's like the new N-word, man. You cannot mention that. They look at you and yeah. like, oh, God, I hope she doesn't talk about that today. The, the thing is, is that uh, until, you know, people get to grips with uh, how to deal with a very difficult situation, which it is, which is a, a world a world at cyber war, you know, then, you know, it, nothing's going to change. Uh, but it's going to be innovation from our side that will That's get around right. this. The internet the internet is is a very interesting place. You know, That's like right. why have you got Sean, why have you got a Chinese Weibo account? You know, are you a communist? Like <laughs> no, no, I'm an anti nuclear activist and I want to share my stuff. I want, uh, you know, any journalists or whoever wants to, you know, look at the research I'm doing, I'm going to have it here on this site and you can access it from here. And, um, you know, and, and you can upload videos uh, up to 15 minutes uh, on uh, Weibo. And, uh, yeah, so basically you can do part one, part two, part threes and all this. Uh, but you can certainly do short videos, put them up on, on Weibo and they're there. So if you want to get a copy of it, you know where to go. Um, and it's not going to get taken down as long as you haven't insulted the Chinese people or the, the Chinese government. Um, if you're just doing what you're doing. As long as you don't insult the Chinese people or the Chinese government. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's quite easy to do. I mean, that's... 
Please if you've got no. if you've got Chinese people that are anti-nuclear, uh, they're very much uh, into climate change. In the last UN session, uh, and in every UN session, mm-hmm. Security Council session, China always says that they want dialogue. They don't want to see any violence. And when they're discussing mm-hmm. Yemen or I Syria, they have know. a standard I line, know. and it's promotion of peace. So peace activists are not going to have a problem using a Weibo account, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, at the end of the day, it's an experiment, but uh, nobody else has thought. I mean, to, do to be it. clear, even in the United States, you can't say anything against the United States' policy without getting a little knock at the door, either. So, that's the totally. reality. So it's so, you know, so, it's so, not so, that so, different. So, <laughs> anyway, look, I'm not I'm not going to sell uh, Weibo anymore. But the bottom line is, you can get a free account. Well, you're not really you know, selling Weibo. You're just suggesting that people go there as an alternative good, way to to put their research out and go look for other information. Because what you're saying is that on the Weibo accounts, you can find information that you can't get if all you're using is these Western search engines. Yeah, I mean, put it this way. If I have a group of people, say I've got 300 people, and I put a post up, all 300 people will see that post. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. If you do that on Facebook, Oh, you mean on Weibo? Yeah, like that's the thing. I I do know that, like even your videos. I subscribe to you, and I have like the little ringy-dingy bell so that I get notified with every video that you have. I honestly did not see the... Uh, other video and by the way when i went to your channel you posted yeah. our video it's the fourth ch- video in people can find our last video there that's right yeah yeah the Novichok one the, uh, you, which you, i'm not going to you must have about. mirrored it from ucy tv and just posted it up yeah yeah no totally i've done a, i've done a couple of uh, mm-hmm. uh of our videos that's what i'm actually. saying see i've never really been notified that you did that so i'm on youtube and i don't get notified myself so you are correct in that <laughs> yeah. notify your own we video right. proving the point <laughs> oh my goodness gracious but you know, you, Sean, this is the thing. I really want to impress. I want people in Europe to understand what a grave risk we are at with keeping the Columbia Generating Station open. I would love if you could be an envoy to plugging some information into some people over there on this one and piquing their interest. Because Tom right. Carpenter from Hanford Challenge said, you know what, you are probably right. When I He was my last interview on UCY TV. And I said, Tom, am I, are we incorrect here uh, that if there is greater than a 6.6 earthquake at Fukushima, I mean at Columbia Generating Station, that there is a 25-mile radius that you cannot get near or you will die for two weeks. And Hanford is 12.6 miles away from Columbia Generating yeah. Station. So nobody could yeah. get in there. And there are tanks in there that must be turned every 72 to 82 hours or 84 hours, every two to three, four days. They have to be turned or they will blow up and they will turn into a fire, potentially a fire. For but the nuclear industry years. just say, look, 100 millisieverts, no problem, just go but in there. But you know, this is that. the thing. They can lie all they want, but this will have so much plutonium. Their storage tanks there are so toxic because it's all the equipment it's all the gunk. They've and they've done worse services. So if that happens and Columbia Generating Station is not in shutdown mode, we could have a worldwide entire northern hemisphere catastrophe that goes on for 100,000 years. I, yeah, well, I'm, would, I'm I, kind of down into that muck because I'm in the west coast of Ireland here, but... I have my little Geiger counter, so I'll keep well, it posted. do me a favor and check into this, what I'm saying here, because I think you don't take this seriously, but it is, I would love to have people in Europe put pressure. No, it's, it's, I've done, a, I've done a, I think if you go onto Nuclear News and you scroll down, you might have to go to, you know, like get to the bottom and then do the page before, uh, but somewhere there, there's a report on Sellafield, which is a very... Very similar yes, site. Yes, very Hanford. similar. Actually, uh, and that, that actually, uh, that uh, that for me, you know, uh, and this is the project projections used by the nuclear but is industry. There a, is there an active nuclear power plant that's on an earthquake nuclear. fault near Sellafield? Um, uh, uh, the UK is not known 
for its earthquakes. Not saying that that can never That's happen. That's the point here. Uh, this yeah. nuclear power facility, this you know that story, correct? That the uh, Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility, they had, everybody had heard rumors there was an earthquake underneath that facility. So they decided to hire some geologists. They did a two-year study and found several, three or four earthquake, active earthquake faults. The state of Washington got all uppity at it and said, well, we're going to bring in our own team. They did another two-and-a-half-year study. They found over eight active earthquake faults, and they also discovered that Hanford's sitting on top of an active earthquake fault. Yeah. Columbia Generating Station needs to be shut down. It needs to be shut down. And it would be awesome if people in Europe would contact the Bonneville Power Station and our elected officials here in the United States and say this is a worldwide catastrophe. So just a couple of state senators in Washington, if just get some movement going our way, man, because I'm serious. I, I feel an obligation because we're friends that I tell you this because this is a very serious thing that will not just affect the United States. Look yeah. into it. I, yeah, I, please, I know. It's, please it's do difficult. some research on this. As I said, uh, at the moment, we put up stuff on nuclear-news.net. We used to get 1,200 hits a day. Uh, we're down to about half that. You know why? Um, it's not just Google. People are not no, interested. It's, just Google. it's absolutely Google. I got the stats out. I actually worked it out. I actually show, I show how Bing goes up and, and Google goes right down. Google, we used to get 70% basically of the hits we got came uh, got coming in were coming from google right that's 2016 right 2017 it dropped and as of today we're getting about i thought it was 10 percent, but it's actually about 15 percent um of the hits that we get are coming from google right and we get we now get um like as many hits from china as we do from uh, europe you know, we say China and Hong Kong. We get as many hits from there as we do from Europe, which is the reason why I decided to get a Weibo account. There's more, you know, because the Chinese can reach our blog, but people in Europe can't because it just doesn't come up in their on their, their, their sites or whatever, you know, whatever's going on. But the stats well, don't lie. There certainly is the Manhattan Project in force. They're certainly keeping us quiet there's certainly the people in charge of well, the whole shebang we, we, know that we know the chain of evidence it's pentagon nato nato uh atlantic council atlantic IAEA, council all of those people no, it's not the aiea we're talking about the censorship stuff here you know oh um, i think so they're it, involved in it the censorship stuff very heavily well I, the, the IAEA are politicians. They'll do what they're told, you know, uh, but they sometimes yeah, do push back. Yeah, I get back. what you're saying. You're talking about the policymakers, these institutes that yeah, make the policies. Yeah. That's what Carl Grossman was talking about, but, the formations of these institutes, how they started. It was like, oh, I mean, honestly, I, I, I was grateful that Carl let me read his book because I did not know it. And I'm sure the people that are hearing my book, at least here in Eugene, because we're on an FM radio station, you know, you can get it in your radio in your house or in your car, not only on the Internet. It's a real FM radio station. And people oh. hearing it, they will know how these, they, it helps them understand how these policy councils were formed. Because for myself, I often wondered, how did they get to make these decisions? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they're all based on uh, finance, really. It exactly. really comes down to, to money, you ding, know. Ding, ding. Uh, Twenty-one trillion dollars got lost by the Pentagon. I mean, how much of that went into the nuclear industry? What do you reckon? Oh, I think that you know, there's that's just what they're telling us. They lost twenty-one trillion. I well, mean, we'll put it this put it this way: in in uh, the nineteen nineties, there was a big recession. Um, and I was working. I remember I was doing. I think it's uh, all in the. Excuse me. I think it's back. I want to go back to that sentence. I think it's in the space wars program. I think they're going to roll out the space wars programs with new nuclear weapons very much quicker than they would have ever told us. Uh, well, I, I would say that they've already done it, and because the thing is that when they start to bring things like that in, uh, anything that's contentious, you can guarantee they've already done it. Right. Uh, you know, when they brought in laws to allow uh, people to be hacked in the UK in uh, was it twenty 
2017, um, they brought these laws in. Well, th they were being taken to court because they'd been doing that for uh, you know quite for the best part of a decade. What are you talking to other about? They allow people to be hanged in the UK. Not hanged. No, they're, they're hacked. 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 Oh. Yeah, their phones, their computers are remotely hacked and they're harassed oh, as oh, well. Oh, yeah, so the government can look and do whatever they want to you. Well, we got the yeah, same yeah. thing. It's called the Unpatriot Act, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we and, have and that, the, that called that the, un, the Homegrown Terrorist Act, that if you organize yeah. a world a nationwide protest that affects the profits of a major corporation, you're considered a homegrown terrorist. Yeah. But but they've got uh, they've got various programs in the UK now. Uh, they they can now attack anyone anywhere like America can. Uh, but they they're saying that they will attack. This is a new talk, a new new uh, discussion that uh, or a, di a speech that uh, Theresa May made and various other politicians that they base and and headlines uh, that they're going to be doing cyber attacks against the quote Russians. Uh, that will also, as you know, include all left-wing people, you know. So we, we've got that to look forward to. And they've been doing it. Uh, they've said it that they're going to do it, um, I think it was l uh, last week. Um, and, but they've actually been doing it for two months, okay. And they started with Chris and me and a few other people. Um, but uh, they're sort of building it up. The attack's coming in in various forms. So uh, anyway. It's uh, it's just and they're targeting anti nuke activists and and, uh, uh, and scientists. Not just us, not just us. Right, left wing, uh, you know, sort of single issue uh, groups, you know, whoever. Uh, if you if you're talking about Syria, if you're talking about Yemen, if you're talking about Palestine, you know what they uh, can attack everybody, and if they do, f them. Like there's ways around them. Their paradigm well, it, is not our paradigm. I, well, the thing yeah. is, the thing is for them is to stop the social movement. Stop, you know, and they do that by shrinking the social movement down. Now, of course, we've we've already reached a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are aware. Um, if they do that, it it will be a case that people will adapt, as we're saying. You know, they with, can't whether stop it's the contamination. Breaking. There's effects of contamination. That's what drives people out. When you have a child whose nose bleeds, like those parents said, we never saw our child's nose bleed and so much blood they had to like spit the blood out because, of course, it was radioactive. They couldn't swallow it. So they made their child spit out the blood, volumes sure. of blood for a child from nuclear. And, and, you know, now, what, that when will make a parent up. active, right? So they yeah. can they lie went, they all they the, want. Uh, but The doctor said, oh, do you want, do you want us to cauterize it, you know? Of and... Uh, and, and and what she did, she talked to other mothers who'd had whose kids had had the uh, cauterization done. They said no, it didn't stop the nosebleeds. You know, so so they did. In that case, they didn't bother getting the. They just moved, <laughs> and that worked. Right. You know. Huh. But, but there's, so there's also another one coming up about um, uh, incineration of the waste, which wow. the Japanese were doing. They they were taking it all over Japan to spread the love. Right. Right. Um, I remember and, that. Some people, well, as one one uh, family was saying, they moved to uh, I think it was a Starker, and uh, they basically burnt the uh, waste, and then they started getting nosebleeds again. So they moved from Fukushima to to Osaka to get you know get away from the particles, uh, and then they started burning them again. And there was obviously these micro particles getting past the filters and getting into their noses and causing nosebleeds. Um, sort of, uh, I think they had to stop the incineration. I'm not sure what happened with that, but uh, but uh, um, the, 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 the Japanese don't like to talk about burning the nuclear waste too much. They're doing it. They're doing it in all sorts of weird incinerators, and uh, so they are uh, still incinerating it. I, I I would imagine so. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything recently, but but this in that is a statement about when they did start in Osaka burning uh, Fukushima. Uh, nuclear waste in one of their incinerators um, that, that nosebleeds started up again. So once again, you know, we're we're, we're discovering uh, the the health pathway, you know, the 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 way it actually happened, you know, and what what caused, if you like, the nosebleeds, um, as opposed to just pretending that the nosebleeds are quite normal and don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. Right. Exactly. Well, this is the thing. They're not going to tell you that 
you're being contaminated because so much of the planet is already contaminated. I mean, it's, there's so, ne- this is, I still can't comprehend it because I think in the long run, it is going to cost a lot more money for them to lie to us about it. Unless, of course, they're intent on everyone just dying early and not propagating. I mean, unless they really are culling the population, which, it, you know, I know I sound radical, like all this talk about Trump, <laughs> but, you, you know. Such a, such a warrior, you know, you know, Lonnie, you're a terrible guy, yeah. <laughs> you'd have to come over to live in Ireland, so you just, you'd be back just as the world is starting to end. I mean, It'd be like this. That nice picture at the end of... Well, look, uh, we're talking about a person who's grown up in a gaslit country. Like, right, there is no battered shelter country to go to, country shelter to go to. We are... Americans act like battered wives, and Trump is punching us in the face right now. This anonymous letter openly stated that the military has taken over the presidency. And America is like, oh, well, he's saying it's treasonous. It's not treasonous just because somebody gave their opinion against the president. It's not it's against the president. They're subverting the presidency. They're keeping information from him and saying, don't worry, folks, we're handling it. They have their finger on the nuclear buttons. They're making decisions about nuclear waste and waste and all these regulations and all this stuff that is changing our planet. It's not just about our economy and our poor starving children and our kids who ha- are being screwed in school. You know what I mean? It is, we are talking serious issues. They, the Anwar thing is, they, you know, he approved XL Pipeline the first day. That Before the first day was over, he signed XL Pipeline. They opened sure. up Anwar with the, with Texas. And, you know, all of these pipelines have had massive accidents. There's, they're always having accidents. Yeah, I know they had an accident on the on that pipeline afterwards. Of course. And they keep having them. So look, this is all this is why I say this is why I'm so grateful, Sean, that you're doing your blog and Look, you guys, are, we're at the near at the end of this hour. You've been listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show. We really appreciate you listening to us. I know we sort of veer off. Sean's in Ireland, and it's like, I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning there right now. Exactly. He just popped on to let's get a show going because there is a lot going on. And I, I just got on Spreaker, and I said, hey. And, he go, and we said, yes. So... His website that he is one of the editors of is nuclear-news.net. And his YouTube channel, which you will have to look for, is A-R-C-H-L-I-G-H-T. A-R-C-E-L-I-G-H-T. Okay, let's hear that again. A-R-C-E-L-I-G-T. Oh, but it's only A R C L I G H T. That's it. Yeah, two zero one one. Yeah. Okay. A R. That's why I have trouble finding you. For goodness' sake. Make sure sure that ArcLight and two eleven is joined together. Well, I usually just go to your website and just take the. I just take the. uh, I copy and paste so that my viewers and my listeners will have the exact link because I like to give all the links to all these things. I think. I think. I think Noel actually posted the videos up on Nuclear Dash News homepage on the right panel. Oh, You'll see the, awesome. the video. I'm telling yeah, you, the video. Sean, that is Free a video. huge service to all of humanity, nuclearnews.net. You know, like these few websites out here, like uh, Levy and Levy's show, Nuclear, you know, and you two work together. That's what I love together, Nuclear Hot Seat. Levy yeah. and Levy from Nuclear Hot Seat, and you work together on various projects bringing people together because she is a producer. She doesn't know how to do that kind of stuff. And I, yeah, I think no, it's she... awesome because we do need this information out in the world. And I am going to have these links. And I hope you come back because I am going to figure this out. I'm going to get my computer. I should should mention, because it is incredibly relevant, that uh, Libby put up a 2014 interview with Dr. Alex Rosen, German physician uh, from the Prevention of Nuclear War. And he basically, um, he he debunked the UNSCEAR report. That's the uh, official uh, uh, report uh, on Fukushima uh, to do with the health effects and uh, you know and what have you, uh, especially the health effects. And they said, oh, there'll be hardly any, you know, there won't be any cancers. Oh, it'd be all fine. 
Um, but in the in the Unskier report, he he ripped it apart. Um, there were people on the Unskier group who also managed to tone down uh, because they, they wanted to say, oh, well, they could actually have more radiation. It wouldn't be a problem, you know, the nuclear industry. Mm-hmm. And there were people on the Unskier group said, no, no, no. Um, and they were able to at least mo- uh, modify uh, the report a bit. But then uh, Dr. Alex Rosen read the report and he said, look, it, this is crazy. They didn't take this into account, this and that and the other. Anyway, the link to the report and the actual interview with him, uh, with Libby Halevi, can be found at Nuclear Hot Seat. Right. So if you type in Nuclear Hot Seat. Yeah, I'm going to have her link in there, too. Yeah, stick that in there because that that's very relevant to the, this discussion. She's actually we're having. on KEPW the night before. She's on Tuesday night at eleven, and my show is on Wednesday and Thursday night at eleven. And it's very relevant to uh, mm-hmm. the the evidence uh, that that these uh, these sort of um, internally displaced people from the you know because of the Fukushima disaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that, that that they do have a case. You know whether it's like a thyroid disorder or a thyroid cancer or a, a, a you know sort of nosebleed, skin rashes. Whether it's uh, you know a, a rake of long term uh, sort of health effects that may come out of this, um, which obviously do include cancers. Um, so you know and. and with genetic defects and all the rest as we've discussed as well. So we do, you know, at the end of the day, we need to uh, sort of check out that information because it, once again, that also uh, backs up, you know, the, the case for these people and uh, keep an eye on that arc light to zero one one uh, YouTube channel, because there will be some more of these videos going up. And I'm, I'm sure I've uh, given permission, obviously, for people to share and distribute, uh, including yourself, Lonnie, you know, um, and uh, just give Rachel, Rachel, we call her Rachel, Rachel Clark, uh, will give her um, uh, a, a big heads up because she organized, mm-hmm. you know, I, I asked the questions and then she went over to Japan. She asked the questions. She got to a group together. Do you have in the links South, to her in your together. credits on your videos? Maybe I can write her and ask her before I put it up because I'd like to at least to put the audio up right here on my channel as like. No, no, no. It, it, it's Creative Commons. It's meant great. to say. Okay, great. Uh, well, then I will just do it. I'm just going to do it because honestly, it shook me. I am not kidding you. I, because it's been so long since we've really heard real people, real parents. It's been, I personally have been very thirsty to hear the real parents. I've heard some parents, but it's the same people, right? This was a new, this was a very, this format was very different than what I had seen before. Yeah. And and the other thing you have to bear in mind is that, you know, I, uh, I've got European News Weekly, all one word, dot, um, dot WordPress uh so hang on, New, European News Weekly. WordPress. Com, right? And if you go to that, I've I've put quite a lot of different uh, links down about campaigns that Japanese have done, health uh, studies on thyroid cancers, and all sorts awesome. of things. Um, will and, you send and how me they... a link? Will you send me a link to that, and I'll also include that in the credits of this show. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I'll send you that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, that I'll just give you the headline. You can scroll down. There's all sorts of little things on that. So it's my sort of little sideline blog, blog where I put bits, okay. uh, just for uh, easy access. Um, so, uh, but yeah, if you just keep scrolling down, you'll. It sounds you'll come like you across. do this. Is this like your full? Do you? Are you? Is this your avocation, or do you make a? You know, I mean, it's. I think you're volunteer like me, right? Like I don't get any compensation. Yeah. I, 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 well, I, I tried to get funding before, but uh, it's a point of contention with the security services. They, they really, you know, that they, they, uh, they, they closed my, uh, what's it, uh, fundraiser account down. Uh, wow. Just when I was about to use it, yeah, I was trying to get a computer, um, but I, I don't, I don't, I haven't asked for money, you know, generally just yeah. to live or I, yeah. I want the poor. Because it by sounds like the- you're very busy with this. It sounds like you do lots of yeah. this stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's, but it's 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 kind of like you know, I go to work all day, work hard, come home. And uh, then I sort of boot up the computer, do some research, oh, and uh, it's kind of what I do. Like on the weekends, I and, and I, I do these, I edit these videos. shows, I do my yeah, YouTube's. Got, I feel like I need to. I need to share with humanity. I feel very compelled to do that. 
Yeah. Anyways, we're I, at I the end of the hour, off. Sean. I'm going to cut this short. Okay. And we're going to cut it off. Ooh. I'm going to start our outro. You've been listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show, speaking with Sean McGee, again, of nuclearnews.net or ArcLight2011. That's A-R-C-L-I-G-H-T-2011 on YouTube. Sean ArcLight on Facebook and ArcLight2011 on Weibo. And <laughs> on you've got Weibo. Weibo. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Sean. Oh, last two things. Free Julian Assange, and don't forget Venunu, uh, Mord- Mordecai Venunu, the Israeli uh, whistleblower Mordecai who's Venunu. spent 30, 30 years exactly. uh, under house arrest. He's married to a Norwegian. Right. Uh, he's not allowed to live with his wife in Norway. I know. I know. God bless both. Free and both. Take care. Thanks, Sean. Thank Put you. your courage feet on you guys. Talk to you soon. The Age of Fission Radio Show brings you book readings, pertinent articles, interviews with both activists and victims of nuclear and environmental contamination. We strive to deliver only the facts from reliable sources. We want to remind you that love is greater than fear and happiness is resistance. Our dedication to love and happiness paves the road for innovation and healing. As we face our harsh reality, let us hold each other up and rejoice in our humanity. If you want to comment, please send your thoughts to ageoffission at gmail.com. That's A-G-E-O-F-F-I-S-S-I-O-N at gmail.com to your host, Lonnie Clark. <laughs>